created by Jeff Astrop and Sharon Horgan, the second season of Shining Veil, starring Courtney Cox, Greg Kinnear and Sherlyn Fenn in the lead roles, is about to be released on Stars pretty soon. As the second season of the American horror comedy is about to release soon, we thought this would be the perfect time to give you an overview and recap of the series so far, so that you can have a hassle-free viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the series, so if you haven't been able to catch up with the series yet, maybe you should pause the video and get back to watching it. But if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. After learning of Patricia's affair with the plumber, Teddy and their two teenage children, Gaynor and Jake, decide to relocate from Brooklyn to Shining Vale, Connecticut. Pat is experiencing midlife and existential crisis because her kids ignore her and her husband is constantly at work. In her cramped Brooklyn apartment, she used to feel suffocated and struggled to focus on her follow-up book for which she had already accepted an advance from her editor camp. As the tension increased, Pat lost control and began a brief relationship with Frank, a hottie who is also a plumber among many other things. In an effort to save their marriage and because Pat's mental health was deteriorating, Terry and Pat sought therapy three months ago. So Terry decided to act and purchase a brand new home in Shining Vale. Pat decides to finish her book at the new house and send the first chapter to Cam as soon as she can. But because of writer's block, she is unable to complete even a single sentence. As the tension rises, Pat begins to sense a menacing presence around her and begins to have hallucinations about Rosemary Wellingham the previous owner of the mansion who committed suicide there. Dr. Burke, Pat's misogynistic therapist, persuades her that Pat's visions aren't caused by a ghost but rather an alter ego she is created to unleash her creativity as she talks to him about them. In addition to giving Pat hard drugs, especially clonazepam, to deal with her anxieties, Dr. Burke makes Pat believe that Rosemary is nothing more than a muse who is assisting her in finishing the book. Soon after, Pat begins to abuse the drugs and loses control of her body, as a result her vision begin to appear more frequently and more intense. Pat makes a deal with Rosemary who she believes to be her alter ego in which she agrees to let her take control of her body while she likes. The first chapter which gives Pat the impression that Rosemary is genuinely trying to help her is one that her editor Cam adores. However, as soon as Pat gives the demon full control of her body, Rosemary begins to reveal her hidden agenda which is influenced by the horrors of her previous life. Rosemary Wellingham completely concealed her identity up until the end of season 1 of Shining Wheel. She assisted Pat in writing her book, filling the pages with her explicit desires while teaching Pat a bit about Rosemary's past. However, it was never made clear with absolute certainty whether the information was made up for Pat's novel or was based on real events. The fact that Rosemary's story seems so similar to Pat's own life, including her alcoholism and her relationship with the neighborhood grocer Dan Harris, raises the possibility that Rosemary is a fabrication of Pat's psychotic and disordered mind. The second theory is relatively thin because if Dan Harris was a fictional character, then it would be impossible for Pat's son Jake to summon Dan's ghost in the treehouse in the woods. Additionally, whenever Jake wore his VR, he frequently encountered Rosemary's daughter Daisy in the woods, suggesting that these two ghosts were likely just as real as Rosemary herself. According to Pat's visions and her book, Rosemary Wellingham once shared a home with a family of four. Rosemary's husband, in contrast to Terry, was was incredibly possessive and domineering and raising her children was a real torment. Similar to how Pat learned about Terry's feelings for Catherine, Rosemary learned about her husband's affair with her secretary one morning at the breakfast table. Horrified by the revelation and tortured by her family's treatment of her, Rosemary snapped and pulled an axe out of nowhere, butchering her entire family. In a vision of bleeding Dan Harris warned Pat not to let Rosemary enter her body, which raises the possibility that she was the one who killed him. Rosemary is believed to have chosen Pat's body and taken possession of it because Pat related to her on many levels, including how her family mistreated her, how she began an affair with Frank, and most significantly her alcoholism. Given that Pat has a family history of psychosis, the story also leaves other scenarios open. It's possible that Pat has developed the same mental illness because Joan, who is Pat's mother, was identified as having schizophrenia and required some time in a mental hospital. When Pat overdosed on drugs and allowed Rosemary to take control of her body, her consciousness and personality lapses, and she loses consciousness. She doesn't remember anything Rosemary does with her body until the drugs wear off, at which point she regains consciousness. 
business. Maybe Pat had dissociative identity disorder and she was probably the one who pushed her neighbor Valerie onto the new fence, which killed her. This supports the theory that Pat drugged Claire Vanderbilt, a rival author, the night of the party at her house putting her into a coma. Pat also may have discovered Valerie's pendant in the attic, which would also support the theory. Nothing is clarified until the very end of the season 1 of the series as the story alternates between these two scenarios as to whether Pat is possessed, mentally ill or both. She would lose control of her body whenever Pat's family mistreated her and either her other personality or Rosemary's ghost would take over. She used to yell at her kids to get them to behave while she was being violent. That opens the door for Rosemary to tell Pat that she butchered her entire family before committing suicide in the bathtub during their final conversation at the Retro Tiki Bar, a bar similar to the one in the movie Shining. At this point, Rosemary made hints that she and Pat might be the same person driven to the brink by their families. As a result, Rosemary urged Pat to cut off her entire family in order to put an end to the horrors for good. Pat, however, resisted Rosemary's orders as she tried to emphasize the fact that she is a mother inside. As a result, the entire conversation serves as a metaphor for the struggle between a mother who wants to protect her family and a woman who wants to be liberated. In order to protect her family from herself, Pat made the decision to dismember Rosemary's vessel, which was her own body. She attempted to swallow some pills, instantly conjuring up images of Pat's mother June attempting suicide when Pat was still a young girl. Perhaps this suggests that Pat was gradually going insane just like her mother had. However, Rosemary eventually persuaded Pat that Terry was the one who ruined her career and gave her writer's blog as her ink stopped flowing soon after they got married. After that, Terry wanted children so he made Pat a full-time housewife to take care of everything for him while he was out all day flirting with Catherine in the office. Pat would cook and clean the house for Terry. With these ideas, Rosemary once more took control of Pat's body and went to the attic where Terry was reading the final chapter of Pat's novel in which she wrote about chopping her own family, another allusion to Kubrick's film. Before Terry could escape or respond to his wife's insanity, Pat had attacked him while brandizing an axe and acting exactly like Jack Todd. While Terry was running from Pat throughout the house, forgive Pat for her infidelity with both Frank and Blake, she cheated on him and instead of getting a divorce or leaving her, he bought a house in Connecticut which made her feel even more worn out. After finally hitting Terry with an axe and scratching his head, Pat abruptly realized what she had done and immediately descended the stairs to check on her husband. Gino entered the house at the same time as Pat was being accused of killing Valerie for her necklace which she had buried in the backyard. The drugs started working and Pat passed out before she could defend herself. In the end, Pat awoke from her sleep to discover that she was bound to a stretcher and that she had been admitted to Shining Vale Psychiatric Hospital according to a man. The same documents Pat signed for her mother Joan about committing suicide are repeated as Gino admits her mother to a mental hospital. But before Pat could be locked up, she noticed a group photo on the wall showing the entire staff of the Shining Vale of hysterical women standing in front of her home, which suggests the home was formerly used used as a psychiatric facility. Pat recognized Rosemary, her most terrifying nightmare from a similar face she saw in the photo. The date June 23, 1859 that is written below the image raises the possibility that this particular image was also taken on that day. The fact that Rosemary and her family Eliza, Daisy and Lord passed away on June 23, 1954 however causes a gap in time which suggests that Rosemary was not the woman in the photograph. Rather, it was a different person who lived in 1859. The image resembled the ballroom photo at the conclusion of The Shining, which gave rise to the hypothesis that Rosemary might have taken on another form, as the Kubrick film's final scene suggests. It will be intriguing to discover whether Pat's paranoid imagination created the ghost or whether there was actually a ghost in the house. Shining Wheel Season 2 will start streaming on October 13, 2023. Hey, 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 thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your expectations regarding Season 2 of Shining Wheel. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema series. See you at the next one and for the time being we are signing off, bye bye, you don't audition for Pornhub, your ex-boyfriend puts you on it and I'll be back.